Hey everyone, welcome to another beautiful day in Da Nang. Today, what we're going to be doing is exploring one of the UNESCO sites in Vietnam. And the place that we're going to today will be called My Son World Cultural Heritage. And what I did is I just bought a ticket and the ticket is 150,000 doms. Um, so we're going to go see some monuments and let's go check it out. Let's go. All right, so we are here at My Son and what I didn't know was that there's actually a partnership between India and Vietnam to preserve this place as well in, in collaboration of the government of Vietnam. So as soon as you get in, there is a uh, bridge that you have to walk through and let's see where it takes us. The only other thing as well is you can also get a shuttle to take you to different places, uh, which I was, which is also included in the ticket as well. So when you purchase the ticket, you get the um, entrance to the museum, uh, you get access to watching the cultural shows, and you also get access to using the shuttle buses to go to the different areas um, of my son. Because uh, with this area, it's quite large, and we're going to see whether we can explore the whole thing. Let's go. All right, this is what I was talking about in terms of you got to wait in this area because walking to the My Son site is two kilometers. And I don't know about you, but sometimes I think if you're walking around area and traveling, you might want to preserve your energy considering how, um, what the weather's like and um, also how much energy you want to preserve before exploring your area. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to wait here for five minutes and get a shuttle and go straight to My Son Sanctuary. All right, so we just got dropped off over there and when you get dropped off, you're going to have to walk, I think, a kilometer to actually get to the place. And so this is actually blocking the area and we're going to walk and see what's up there. All right, we have just got to the first area and we are in area group H and this is one of the monuments. That we're going to explore today but it's also damaged a bit as well and the reason why it was damaged was because back in the Vietnam War um, Americans actually bombed this place and uh, caused a bit of a uh, destruction to the monuments itself so that's the reason why this building is half damaged and that's why the Indian government, as well as the Vietnam government, has put a plan to put some restorations in place so then they can preserve this world heritage spot. Okay, so there seems to be different group areas that show different monuments from Group M to Group A to G, E, F, H, which we just saw. Um, and next to H, we've got a public stage as well where they'll be doing a uh, traditional dance, which we will see at two o'clock. And B, C, D and L. So what we'll do is we'll go to B, C, D first and see what's there and then walk around to A, G, E and F as well. Let's go. We have just gotten to the C group. It was a 100 meter walk down but we are now here and look how beautiful that is. Wow. Look at that. We are going to go for a walk now to see what we can find. So, for anyone who's interested, um, my son is located uh, 40 kilometers away from Hoi An and I think it's 70 kilometers away from Da Nang. So, if you're traveling from Da Nang to here, it's an hour and a half and one hour for Hoi An to travel to my son. So, this place has been added to the World UNESCO Heritage Site in 1999 and I don't know if you can see, but there seems to be some similarities in the way um, these rocks are created, um, likewise in, in Cambodia. So if you've visited, visited Angkor Wat, um, you can see some similarities in the way they designed and built these statues and monuments. So my son, the meaning of my son actually means beautiful mountains. And as you can see, all these monuments here are made in the mountains and the rainforests. And so there's a range and collection of them. Wow, look at that. This is the 
first area C. So this conservation area covers 1,158 hectares. So it's quite a large space. And I'm not just talking about this area, right? I'm talking about the whole areas that can um, have like the different monuments because you know how they're separated into different sections. They say it takes you approximately two to three hours to explore the thing, but um, let's have a look and see. All right, so we're not allowed to go in the area. section we're covering right now. It's even got grass um, and plants growing on them as well, on the rocks. Okay, that's Monument C. Let's go see other monuments. Whoa, check this out. Out. We are going to go in one of the monuments and see what's in there. Wow. Look at those designs. And those scriptures. This one's a cow. Mm. How beautiful was that? Let's go see. Okay, so I've just walked five minutes and I feel like my face is as red as my hat. Um, I don't know if you guys agree, but I'm feeling like my face is as red as my hat. Um, we have just gotten to section A and we're going to go check out group A. Let's go. We've gotten to group A and we're going to walk in, see what we have. This is the A section of my son. And we're going in right now. All right, so I don't know if you guys want to know a little bit of history about this place, but um, this place was actually uh, built by the Champa Empire, um, who controlled Vietnam from 200 to 1700. And the, the Champas are a Muslim faith spread, um, spread eastward into Southeast Asia. And these temples here, Right, they're heavily influenced by the Hindus. So, these monuments here are meant to represent Krishna and Vishnu and Shiva as well. So, I don't know if you can see some similarities in the buildings, but yeah. 
it's a little bit about the history. And the way this got discovered was the French found this in 1898 and they started a restoration project on them. Because they saw that these buildings looked like Angkor Wat and they wanted to preserve the history of it. And when I mentioned prior, when the Americans came to bomb the area, that was because the Vietnamese people were hiding in these temples. And so that's when they bombed the site during like intense period of fighting during the Vietnam War. But gladly, there are still some areas here that are quite, um, quite good in terms of, even though it's bombed, it still looks really good. So that's just the history of this place, uh, of my son Tra and why it's so important and listed in the World UNESCO Heritage Area. I just find it really interesting how it's uh, mixed in both faiths. Hinduism is involved in it and the Champa people as well, like the Champa community. This is section A. We're gonna go in and see what there is because uh, within these uh, walls as well, there should be some pictures in here. Yeah, here you go. All right, we've just explored uh, section A. I want to go to another area. I think that was section B. Uh, oh no, we did the BCD group, didn't we? Yeah, that's right. So now we're going to go to another area. Let's go see what else they have. We have just gotten to the G section and what you had to do was you have to walk up the stairs and we end up in the G section. This one's a little bit more uh, smaller than the other ones. And it seems to be quite damaged. Alright, so we can go up these stairs. Whoa. The only thing as well is, um, these stairs are slippery too. I wouldn't say slippery, but, um, they're just very small and steep, so you just have to be careful when you're going up here. Alright, let's have a look. Oh, we feel a dead end. Oh, I just found something really interesting. I don't know what the meaning is, but each area has a triangle. One. Two, three, and I don't know whether that was uh, supposed to be designed like that, but, oh, and you should also be careful because there's a uh, wasp nest in here as well. All right. I'm just going to walk around and see what else I have. Oh, okay. So, they did say that this building has a lot of animals in there as well, right? So, in terms of architecture, it had like animals, gods, and priests. So, this here reminds me of the dragon. It's the one that scares away the spirits. I don't know what this one is supposed to look like. Oh yeah. Look at that. The way they're designed. I don't know if that one's meant to look like a snake. 
So it's very detailed in the way they made it. And quite similar patterns as well. If you have a look here, they're all the same here. Yeah, have a look at that. Yeah. All right, so we've seen this section. Let's go to the next section. I am really sweating and hot right now. And if you're not really good with hot weather, I would recommend coming early in the morning or later in the evening. There are some show times as well um, for the dance, uh, for dancing, but if you really can't handle the heat, I'd recommend coming a little bit earlier. It does open at 6 a.m., so uh, 6 a.m. to 5, 5.30 p.m. So yeah, come in the morning if you can't handle the heat. Uh, Cause at the moment I'm, it's really hot, but I can still do it and walk around. So it's completely fine. I think there's around three more sections we need to check out and see what's here. And then we might have already done the whole tour of my son Tra. And this is what it's like to visit a World Heritage UNESCO site. We've just got to the section of the EF area. Now let's have a look. Wow, look at that. I don't know if you can go in. Let's see if we can go in. Alright, that's all we have in here. Alright, let's go outside. What else do we have here? Okay. Oh, this one's all covered in grass. This monument here. So, in terms of how this monument was built, um, you see how they've got red bricks on them? Oh, let's have a look at that one actually. I'll show you that one. Wow, look at that. They're a little bit brown now, but these red bricks here, they were used um, and piled on top of each other to build these uh, temples. And these soft stones were built, we used to build the wall and were baked at very low temperatures and stacked on top of each other. So back then they didn't have anything like cement. And so all they did was stack it on top of each other and put it at low temperature and eventually when it got cold the stones locked themselves into place and there weren't any holes in them as well which is just surprising in terms of how back then there was no technology and yet they made such a beautiful monument right i just find that so interesting i mean if the human mind put a human mind wants to put something together they definitely will and they'll make anything um, if they put their mind to it, they can achieve it. Which is what I find so interesting. But the other thing I found really interesting as well about the foundation and the spiritual side of things was that they built them on three sections, right? And so if we look at this building, I know it's a little bit damaged at the moment and they're restoring it right now, but at the bottom, they, they push through, uh, how do I say this? Um, Spiritually speaking, they've got three levels, right? The first one, being the bottom, is the foundation, which represents the mortal world in which we're living in at the moment. And the more they build on top, the middle section is the sacred tower body, and that rep represents the spiritual world in which we can't see. And the top, it represents the offerings of flowers, fruits, trees, birds, animals, and represents things that are close to spirits and human beings as well. And I, I didn't know that. I found it was really interesting. Um, I don't know necessarily if that's true. So if you know whether that's true or not, I think it's still a beautiful story in terms of how it's been built. But yeah, 
comment below and see. And I just want to see whether that's true or not. If anyone knows about it. All right, let's keep walking. All right, so it's got no entrance up there. Oh yeah, that's very dangerous if you go up there. So definitely no entrance. Uh, that's a that's one of the things I really like about history. Um, it just shows you exactly what's been done in the past, how they did it, and you know we use that knowledge to better ourselves in this world as well, um, to be able to create more. And I just think it's a beautiful thing. And the way it's been designed before as well, it just gives you an insight in terms of how the person was thinking and you know what their version of let's say art is or what their version of what they think is beautiful and it's ever it's ever changing in terms of from generation to generation so i just believe that it's a never-ending interesting topic to talk about and that's why i love traveling absolutely amazing just gives you a little bit more perspective right and the beautiful thing about it as well is I can show you exactly all these places and what I'm seeing and we can also learn the history together in terms of how it was made and I just see a really beautiful butterfly, a white one and a yellow one flying. As we walk past this direction we can also see some monuments as well that aren't buildings, they're statues of animals and I really can't uh, I, I don't know what this is, to be honest. Um, I would have to say, do you think it's a jaguar? I, ca I can't tell with the, uh, the face being half gone. Uh, it definitely could be a jaguar. And this one here is a human, um, dressed in, s dressed in spiritual clothes. I'd say spiritual, not spiritual clothes, like, uh, cultural clothes. And I think the interesting I found here as well is, uh, it's even got bomb craters here too to look out for and I don't know whether oh no it's probably a area to show that that's an area where the bomb hit and it just hasn't recovered since then this is this is one of the areas affected by the bombs back in the Vietnam War so this is what you can expect from this area um, I think there's two more areas that we want to go explore uh, and we're just going to walk past and see what we um, can find and explore there. As we're walking, there's actually an area here called the Half, the Halt Hut where you can buy some souvenirs as well. So with that hut being the first stop, I believe this is going to be the last stop in terms of uh, the monuments that we're going to be seeing because we are now at Group K. And with Group K, this is the last monument that we'll be seeing for the day. Um, I don't know if you can see this on camera, right? But as I was walking past, it looks like this side of the building is actually tilting this way. And that one's tilting that way. Uh, it looks like it's about to fall. Which makes me a little bit concerned, but you know what? This building has been here for hundreds and hundreds of years, so centuries and I wouldn't be too concerned about it but yeah so as we walk in um I don't know, yeah, I don't know if you can see that on camera hold on I want to get to the other side and show you this all right we're on the outside of it So, I don't know if you can see that, but there's a picture over there that has three faces coming from the left, the right, and the middle. And the person seems to be meditating on a stone. That's the picture up there. And I can't seem to find any other animals on these bricks. So, I believe that is all we've seen in terms of the monuments in my sun tree. Let's go see what else there is. Okay, so we're walking out of this place and we're walking towards the bridge, right? And this bridge uh, connects through to 
a river on that side to, to my son. And if we continue walking down this path, it leads us straight to the beginning where there were restaurants and where the bus shuttle drops you off. And so we've just finished the tour of my son. So now that you've seen the World UNESCO site, let me know what you think in the comments below. And if you like this video, like, comment and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. See everyone. Bye.